my kind of key interest, as you've highlighted, is what I call food-centric fiction, which I define very loosely on purpose because it's just any fiction that uses food as a component um, in storytelling, which gives me the elasticity to explore as much as I want without having to be too prescriptive. Um, and I have always been very drawn to the um, combination of, well, not combination, but the manifestation of gendered kind of politics and ideals in relation to food practices. And I find the way that women are written about or characters are created in relation to food to be fascinating and so often it can fall into kind of binary tropes so um a kind of benign nurturing archetype or something that is more i suppose to use for want of a better word unhinged and so subversive femininity refers to a more kind of expansive and elastic way to be a well to be demonstrating female or feminine behaviours in relation to food. So there's a subversion of the kind of the, the two archetypes there. My, my way into the book Piglet was I wrote the scene where um, Piglet is cooking her, for her fiancé the day after he confesses some terrible truth to her that shatters their reality. Um, and she's reeling from that. And in that scene... I didn't know who they were. They didn't have names. They were just he and she. Um, I didn't know what had transpired between them, but I was compelled by this very fraught scene and the woman's kind of dogged commitment to continue cooking dinner, despite what happened, and this commitment to the domestic and to domestic routine. I was just fascinated by and I wanted to find out more about that and what was going on there. And then very quickly, she became Piglet because food immediately was part of that character's identity. From that first scene, it was um, her insistence to continue cooking for her um, fiancé who's betrayed her. And so I, in my research, was looking at um, a... Um, author called Sean Nagai, who looks at uh, the cute, the zany, and something else that I've forgotten. Cute, zany, and something else, but it was cute that I was interested in, and the kind of um, reduction and keeping small of, quote, cute things. And in this example, with the nickname Piglet, I find that to be so fascinating because it's both reductive and rude. Um, and I think that it just felt very ripe for storytelling. Well, I find nicknames endlessly fascinating anyway. And the fact that they often aren't our, cho our chosen names, that they're given names, um, that we don't get to, even in adulthood, shed them. Um, that dynamic, I think, is so telling of a family and of a person when someone can't shake a nickname um, and why that is. And I am not really interested or I try to be un not interested or allow too much time to be wasted in my writing. I try to be quite sparse and direct and to the point. And 